welcome to The Trend. I'm Rebecca Granite. He is serving up some laughs while executive producing and starring in the new hit comedy series, Superior Donuts, which you can catch Monday nights at 9, 8 central on CBS. It is the hilarious Jermaine Fowler. Hi. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Hi. It's good to see you. <laughs> I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you. Jermaine, before we get into the show, Superior Donuts, I have to ask you one question. Very serious question. I'm, I'm all ears, yes. How is Aunt Kathy? Uh, Aunt Kathy's good. <laughs> um, Aunt Kathy's awesome. She, um, she's, she's still back in Maryland doing good, and uh, she's still awesome. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't talked to her in a long time, actually, in a couple months, so um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure she's fine. She's, she's Aunt fine. Kathy. She's the most resilient person I've ever known. She is hilarious on yeah. social media, though. Yeah, yeah, she's the best. Yeah. Uh, she thinks Comcast is trying to take over her life and ruin it at the same time. Uh, she, uh, <laughs> you're not owned by Comcast, are you? No, no. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. <laughs> Woo! All right, cool, yeah. She thinks the cable companies are after her and stuff, but that's just on Well, Kathy. we're going to be very nice because we don't want Aunt Kathy to get on us, so. <laughs> no, no, you got to be nice to Aunt Kathy. She'll, uh, she'll, she'll go after anybody and everybody. She's the yeah. best. She's like my personal, like, anonymous, like, you know, like, hacker. You know yeah. I mean? She's awesome. No, she's on your team, and mm -hmm. that's what's important. Mm -hmm. Let's catch everybody up on the show, Superior Donuts. Mm -hmm. So, you star in the show as Franco, and you come in, and you're this, this young guy, this millennial guy who wants to take over this, the donut shop and turn it into something special and more current. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Franco is, uh, he, he's, he reflects who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why I wanted to do the, you know, do the show, because I, I saw a little bit of myself in the character. Uh, Arthur Shubashevsky owns Superior Donuts, and that's been around for 46 years. He's in his 70s, man. He's getting up there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's up there. And uh, he hires this young kid to bring some new life into the shop. The problem is, Arthur, at most times, he, he's not prepared for it. And he's very, he's very reluctant most times to say yes to some of Franco's ideas. But Franco just represents a change that Arthur's so afraid of. Yeah, absolutely. You work with some, an incredible cast here. You have... I do. And j like, just to name a few of them, you have Katie Seagal, of course, mm -hmm. the wonderful Katie Seagal. You also you mentioned Arthur, who's played by Judd Hirsch who we had on Bridget Quinn's 22 Minutes with another show that we have here um, talking about the show. And I wanted to read you something that he said about you. Are you ready for this? <laughs> is he talking trash? No, he, no, this is like the nicest thing ever. He goes, quote, he's the most lovable person that I've ever met doing anything in comedy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? That's awesome. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. So I'll give you the chance to return the favor. Nah. What is it like? Where... <laughs> no. That's no? enough. I'm good. I'm good. Let's get out of here. Come on. Come on, y'all. We're done? Yeah. <laughs> Drop the mic. No, we're out of here. That was awesome. That, that felt so nice. Isn't oh, that wow. Sweet? Yeah, it is. It's very flattering. I mean, when I heard that, I, I thought, I was like, I have <clears> to tell you this. And then just to know what it's like working with them on set, what you learn from them, how it is being on set with these greats. Well, number one, as an actor, this is a, a, a huge opportunity for me. I watch them do their scenes and <clears throat> watch them choose and yeah, pick their their uh, you know their, you know their, their, you know their, what, moments. their moments and yeah. their choices and just their timing, their pacing. Everything's just seasoned. It's amazing. So I get nervous most times doing scenes with them because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm, this is. Yeah, this is Katie, this is Dave, this is Maz, you know, and uh, I grew up watching all of them, period. And uh, I still get starstruck, you know, being on these sets with them. Uh, but the most humbling thing about this whole experience is how nice they, they treat everybody. They treat everyone so nicely and uh, with respect. And it's, they, they're still excited about work. Mm. There's no bitterness. There's no, like, uh, 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 there's no... They're just very enthusiastic about Down coming to, to work. Yeah. And that's what I, I was, you know, I, that's probably the most I inspirational thing. Mm -hmm. About them staying humble, yeah, being down to earth. Period, and oh, I, I, I really appreciate that. You know, um, I, I've I've always been raised to treat people with respect and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and kindness and you know all that. But to see them do it at work, you know, every day is uh, it, it, it means a lot to yeah, me. It's special, yeah, very special. The show, so the show is so funny. So that thank you, Rebecca. You are welcome, Jermaine. Oh. <laughs> No, it's true. It's Thank very you. funny. You guys do a great job. You're writing on the show. You're executive producing. You're starring in the show. It tackles, comedy aside, it tackles real issues. Gentrification, talking about societal issues with police community relations. Yes. 
racism, yes. all of that tackled in the show. Mm -hmm. As somebody who is writing in the show and having this creative input, what was it like being in that room and saying, all right, we're going to go after these issues. How do we approach them? Well, here we go. The show uh, was a play adaptation by Tracy Letts. It mm -hmm. took place in Northside Chicago. And the thing is, uh, Tracy already had a foundation for all that material. Uh, the, uh, the best part was uh, pretty much uh, uh, structuring and all that for sitcom and uh, making it relevant for people today and making it modern and yet keeping it funny. Most comedy, the best comedy to me, comes from a real place. Mm -hmm. no, matter, no matter if it's political uh, or, or cultural or just, um, or, or, uh, just personal, right? So that's, that's, that's my favorite type of comedy. I think it's, it's the best. So uh, the show represents all that. And uh, you just can't have a show set that, that takes place in Chicago without talking about police brutality. Uh, you can't just talk about gentrification. And you, uh, you just can't not talk about these things when you have a show based in Chicago uh, that has a police officer as a character in it, uh, a Muslim fella in the show, or a old Jewish guy and a black kid who grew up in Chicago. You just can't not talk about those things. If you don't talk about them, you do a disservice to the material, the comedy, and the people who come from those places, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like the show does a great job with uh, hand handling those issues and those topics. Uh, but at the same time, we're not a show that is going to be doing that every episode. It gets exhausting, you know? It can choose your moments. Yeah, you, we're not a show that's just going to... Hey, uh, you know, Superior Donuts talked about this this week, and it's like, nah, we're, we're, at, at the same time, as important as those issues are, uh, we're a show that takes place in a damn donut shop. Yeah. And the two characters that are the pretty much the base of the show <clears throat> are Franco and Arthur. Mm -hmm. and, you have, uh, and you have Randy, who's the bridge between those two. So those three characters are the characters where you, you got to keep, they keep the show grounded. And uh, between those three, you have the heart of the show, if that makes sense. So from there, once you get that down and get that, you know, you get that placed, you can go anywhere. You have room to play. You play with mm -hmm. political topics, anything, literally anything. But you got to get that down first. And so when you do do those issues, talk about sexism, gentrification, racism, police brutality, you'll know where everyone's coming from. So everything that they're saying, all their opinions and their point of views come from a place and you kind of forgive them or agree with them. It's like when a friend talks to you about those issues rather than yeah. a stranger. Yeah, it's like on Kathy. On Kathy can say whatever she wants because you go, ah, it's Kathy. Yeah. She's just being Kathy. You know what I mean? So, so they're like, ah, it's Frank. Yeah. Oh, it's Foz. Oh, it's Foz. Arthur. It's, yeah, exactly. So yeah. make sure that that's down first before you can like branch out and do these crazy issues. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Tonight's episode. You have a special surprise. You have a guest star. Cedric the Entertainer is on the show. Yes! <laughs> Did I just break the mic? I'm sorry, <laughs> man. I apologize. I got excited again. Cedric, you, you, you probably screamed a little bit, too. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Cedric's on the show. And Tell I'm, us what we can expect tonight. All right. So I don't want to give away too much, but Cedric is on the show, and Cedric is uh, probably, like, the funniest person that we've had on the show so far. You think so? Yeah. He murdered the entire episode. But he was just being said, like, said as a legend, you know, and uh, he's, been doing it, he's been doing it since I was, you know, coming up, man, and having him on the show, it meant a lot to me, man. He said yes. I was like, Cedric said yes to playing my dad? What? So Cedric plays my dad uh, and uh, Reggie, Reggie Wicks, and um, he, man, every take, every blooper, every, like, er, er, between scenes, behind the camera, front of the camera, the man was just funny as hell, man. Mm -hmm. So I thoroughly enjoy working with him. Uh, so he plays my dad. He's very, very critical of me. Uh, becoming an artist, chasing that dream, because like most parents, they just don't understand, but they mean well. So he doesn't want me to become an artist because he just wants to make sure that I have a stable job and life and I'm not just, you know, going to end up homeless and, you know, couch surfing on people with, with, with mm. friends and stuff like that. So that's how my dad was growing up. And uh, that's why it was important to like kind of use some of my real life to somehow like work into Reggie's character, mm. my dad, uh, because in the writer's room, like you asked before, it's kind of what you do. You take your real life, uh, you know, uh, instances or uh, experiences, uh, experiences and, bring it, and you bring it to the writer's room and it comes told, to life. If you had told yourself years ago that Cedric would be playing your father on a CBS show, I mean, when you were like seven, eight, nine, ten, uh -huh. what would you, you probably would have been just like. I'm like, shut up, self, you stupid. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? Go self? back to bed. So. Yeah, yeah. I've done all that stuff. Um, yeah, of but course. I wouldn't even have guessed it. You mm -hmm. know, it was a, he's he was a huge get.
Huge yeah. get. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, when people see the show, they'll see how much fun we were all having yeah. on set. And uh, they, man, there's so many things we couldn't air. Really? And, and, that, and that bothers me. I'm like, man. All right, give, me, give us one like, that you can tell us that you well, want to uh, see. There was a, there was a, they'll see this on the, on the show. There was okay. a part when, uh, when uh, Reggie, played by Sed, Sed tells, um, tells uh, Arthur, who, who was giving him this flyer to come to my art show at the donut shop, that uh, he finds out it was Arthur who gave him the, that slid the flyer under his door. And uh, he tells Arthur, um, you, you snuck into my building? You're lucky you didn't get uh, your ass shot, and that was that was on that was that that that's what aired. All right, now this is what didn't air. So there was a choice. It was so funny because like um, I'm he, so excited. He, okay, yeah. so mind you, my dad is like a guy who's very critical of me, and uh, he would he he tells me, Franco, you can't just chase art, be, becoming an artist because uh, you know you, you gotta get, you gotta. I'm trying to I'm trying to talk some sense to your black ass. That's yeah. that's one of the, that's one of his lines in the show, and so you go back to the to the uh, line about the flyer under the door. He goes, you you slid the the, the flyer under my door. Man, you look, you can get your black ass shot. And he tells that to my boss, who's a Jewish man. He's not black at all. But like, when he said that, we were all dying laughing because we were like, wow. <laughs> when, when Reggie gets upset, everybody's a black ass to him. No matter what race, <laughs> like, like creed or like, you know what yeah. I mean, culture. He's or like, more than yes, just, yeah. be, you could be a pigeon. He's a black ass, you know what I mean? Get your black ass pigeon out of my face. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it would be. Yeah. And it was one of the funniest things. And we didn't, I don't know why we didn't keep it. But it might have been too obscure. But that was the one thing I was so upset we didn't keep. I'm like, man, come on, man. We gotta, we gotta keep got it. it out there now. Yeah, That's you got awesome. it out there. Yeah, Reggie Wiggs loves saying black ass to people no matter what. Uh, <laughs> he loves, everyone's a black ass to Reggie Wiggs. It's so funny to me. And like, uh, it, was, it was just something he just came up with on the spot. And we're like, yo, we got to do that for every time you get mad at somebody. Yeah. The toll booth guy, uh, you know, like anybody could be a black ass to Reggie Wiggs. Well, before <laughs> we get into our 10 for 10, sure, sure. two quick things I want to get to. One, I just, I need to know, Jermaine, how it is in your brain. Like, I want to know know how you see the world because I would imagine you say you use in your stand-up <laughs> a lot of real life True. situations so like what is it like to be your friend right so I could imagine being your friend doing something funny and you're like yeah that's right I'm gonna use that one later like <laughs> oh like, a, like comedically yeah like I, how I, 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 I have a notebook on me at all times yeah. I'm always writing down bits stories things people say they, they either end up being jokes in my stand-up mm -hmm. or Sketches or movies, like they, I, they it goes, it, it, it branches out that far. Um, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very fun person. I, I love, I, I love having fun. No, period. you're fun. I, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's fun. <laughs> fun to have fun. It's fun to have um, fun. I prefer it. Um, I grew up in a house where, it was, uh, you had to have fun because you know it's just, it's what you had to do. Yeah. You know, I had four, uh, I had three siblings, it was four of us growing up, and um, I'd always try to make my brothers and sisters laugh, whether it would be me doing puppet shows for my little sister, or throwing plays for my little brother, or, yeah, or making, like, home movies with my, my twin and stuff like that. And uh, that's how, that's how, I don't know, I've always been creative that way. And I've so always they know to... their fair game. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> they know, they know. They, they definitely know. They yeah. get, get kind of weary about it, but they go, all right, I know, you, can, you can talk about that. Yeah, but like, right. they know it comes from a place of love, because I, I love them to death. That's yeah. my family. Um, at the same time, like, I guess hanging out with me is like, it can be, it can be fun, but at the same time, I'm a very chill person. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really go out clubbing or anything like that. I love okay. movies. Like, I go out to the movies. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I watch three movies in a day at the theater if I wanted to. I sneak in them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, don't tell Sam. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say. Yeah, 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 I can't, you can't do that. Uh, so, but like, I'm, I'm always just, always trying to find ways to have a good time. You know, whether it be go, I went go-kart, you know, go-karting yesterday with my best friend Fredo from back home in Maryland. And that was, that was a blast. What's up, Fredo? That's awesome. Yeah, That's very cool. Yeah, Fredo's a cool dude, man. Uh, oh, he, he was the first person that like uh, took a, he, he took, he, he was on my side when I was starting out starting in stand-up comedy. So like he Aww. has a special place in my heart. Well, speaking of stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. you are going to be in Chicago coming up, right? And I'm going to be in Chicago. Let's at shout Zanies. that out real quick before yeah. I get to the 10 for 10. I'll be at Zany's uh, uh, May, May 3rd, 3rd through, the through the 6th, 6th. if you guys want to check that out. Yep. That should be a fun one. Um, it, it's weird because I was in Austin uh, a couple weeks ago, and it, it was sold out, like mm -hmm. uh, most of the shows, and uh, that, was, that was pretty badass because the year before, January, uh, I couldn't sell a I ticket. I saw you tweeted that. Yeah, yeah, you did yeah. That. And so upstairs, I, I did an interview upstairs before I got here, mm -hmm. and um, the guy made me cry about it. 
uh, like in a good way because he brought it up. I was like bawling. I was like, man, because this building is very, it means a lot to me because I used to do a lot of auditions in this building. Oh, really? Yeah, when I first started, like 2008, when I first moved to New York, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't, like no one would give me a shot most times. And I would like, uh, like I would just eat it at auditions and like go back home and like just wonder about the next thing and do open mics. It was such, it was like, it, I, was, I was coming up. You know, you gotta, you know, take your, you gotta take your beatings, you know, and I did. And uh, take your lumps, and I did that. And so, like, I got here, and I was like, man, I'm doing an interview in this building right now for a show on CBS. It's, it's crazy. Uh, it really is. So, yeah. like, um, this is, um, it's a dream come true, and I really appreciate it. Oh, you're so sweet. Bad. You're like, all right, I don't want to get all yeah, teary. I don't, man. I got, I got donuts. All right, well, we're water. gonna. Everybody who's watching, I'm sure, is very confused as to why we have donuts here. Although we did say the show is called Superior Donuts. We did say that it's called Superior Donuts. Yeah. It was, it was right. So we're gonna start our ten for ten, and Jermaine, we never do this. I think maybe only one other time have we ever done this on the show where we have a guest where we change the ten for ten. So you're very special, and we're gonna make this the ten for ten eating challenge. <laughs> so, ten questions. You have ten seconds to answer, answer each. If you answer within 10 seconds, you get a bite of the donut. If you answer with that, like longer than 10 seconds, you have to I have to take a bite. So I can just talk long on purpose and you have to eat the donut? Yes. <laughs> I don't know the upside of this game I is. I mean, the, the upside <laughs> is that you get to eat, eat a donut. So oh, all right, well, yeah, let's donut. do this. All right, cool. Because I wasn't sure, because, like, most, like, interviewees don't like eating food on camera. So I was like, well, I'm I don't know not, why you... I'm not your typical interviewer. Hey, you cool as hell. All right, oh, like, let's do go. this, man. All right, like here we go. It. Let's do it. Okay, first of all, I saw somewhere that you said that glazed is your favorite donut. Yes, I only eat glazed. I'm going to get... Who likes glazed the best? Um... Come on, like, the, you might, your me. question is to... Well, when do, you grow up... Is that hey, really your favorite donut? Yeah, like, when you grow up on Krispy Kreme, you know what I mean? Like, that, you, all you're going to eat... Oh, oh man, yeah, yeah, yes, Chris, yes, it's my favorite donut, Krispy Kreme, glaze. Is that the question? I've got the question. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, what's glaze, your favorite donut? Yes, All right, glaze. that's me. That's I'm... me. <laughs> that's All right. <laughs> no, you can't look at them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wait, I just made Jermaine laugh, so I'm. No, because I, I, I it I'm didn't feel like a question. I was like, wait, I know we started yet. I thought that was gonna be a buzzer. Where's the buzzer? No, there's no buzzer here. It's, All right, let's it. do it. Stand up or scripted comedy series? Both. Okay. Wait, no, it's you. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, you like this. <laughs> okay. Your reaction when you heard Superior Donuts was picked up for a second season because it is, by the way, and congratulations on that. Thank you very much. I screamed like a child, actually. Like I was, like I was told I was going to Disneyland or something. Me? Yep. Okay. There you go. Something that is guaranteed to make you laugh. Daffy Duck. You love Daffy Duck. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> the Rick and Morty's pretty good, too. Uh. The way in which you are most like your character, Franco, in Superior Donuts, you mentioned a little earlier that you guys have some... His hair. hair. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> You're being such a good sport. <laughs> I'm most like Franco's hair. <laughs> it's my hair. <laughs> Stupid answer. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> See, they make you cry upstairs. We make you laugh downstairs. Yeah, you're Rebecca. <laughs> you're you my know? only friend. <laughs> I am. See, the, now, now you're gonna start making jokes on me. <laughs> we give you the whole spectrum here. Uh, <laughs> in your opinion, what's the best social media platform for a comedian? Oh, it depends what year it was. <laughs> like right now, let's say right now. Oh, right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, because 2006 was mm -hmm. probably MySpace. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it's dead now. All right, how about right now? Mm -hmm. It depends what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about... Oh, you lose. <laughs> all right. I had a good answer for that, too. Oh, do you have an answer? Yeah. What is it? If you, if you like joke telling uh, in, a, in, a, in a more concise mm -hmm. uh, format, Twitter. Uh, if, you like, if you're a visual person, Instagram. If you are a long-form, long-winded ass comedian, go to Facebook. You know what I mean? <laughs> Facebook, man. Go to the, Facebook. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your best childhood memory. Oh, man. Ah, I had a lot of them. You're going to have to eat this donut, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah, you do. I have a lot of them. Ah! Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, uh, but you eat it. Um, I would say, honestly, <laughs> probably... Um, I don't know. There's so many of them. There's no best one. 
I guess when I that's bought my one. first skateboard or something. That's good. That's a yeah, good one. That, that, that could have been a 10 second answer. Yeah, it could have been. That's, that, that's yeah, okay. my first skateboard. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's three, oh, that's three words. I'm sorry. That's no, it's three good. Seconds. Your biggest comedic influence? Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Go mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> Daffy Duck is your biggest comedic mm -hmm. influence. I like that. Daffy Duck and Richard Pryor. So a cartoon character got you into? Daffy Duck is the reason I wanted to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. Him and like Ralph from um, The Simpsons. Really? Mm -hmm. So it was less of a person and more of like a, a cartoon figure that got you. Yeah, you like, for, yeah, I can do this. People forget like comedians like I don't know as a person like you grew up. I grew up watching TV, mm -hmm. but the only I could watch was, was, was cartoons. Mm -hmm. First cartoon that I got into were, were Looney Tunes. Daffy Duck was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then I got into like Ren and Stimpy and Doug and like yeah. all these Nickelodeon cartoons. And then when I got older, I got into more writing and movies and stuff. So it wasn't until like much later I got into like the real like. Um, but people forget, like, Looney Tunes is, this one, is so smart. Like, it's a, that's some smart comedy. Like, Animaniacs yeah. and Looney Tunes. And those writers were geniuses, actually. Mm -hmm. And the voices were, like, perfect. Like, they, 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 like, they opened doors for, like, a lot of shows. Like, mm -hmm. uh, cartoons, even TV and stuff. But, like, they were some smart, smart, there's some smart writing on those shows, you know? They get, it, only, it only gets the credit that it deserves from, like, yeah. comedians. Daffy Duck works for me. Daffy Duck's the best. Your birthday's coming up. How you know that? I, I know you. You said I'm your only friend, so of course I have to know your birthday, right? This is true. <laughs> this is true, Rebecca. May 16th. May 16th. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I'm a Taurus. How do you plan to celebrate? Not a party guy, but I might throw a party. But it could be at Dave & Buster's or a dope bar slash arcade. Or I could just be at home <laughs> watching TV. Who knows? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spare the moment type of guy. All right, you're I'm giving you that one. Really? Yeah. All right, okay. Because you got most of it in. I did. I got three of them. And then your last one, your favorite scene to shoot in Superior Donuts so far. I like the scenes when the whole cast is together. I love the cast. So any scene where we're all together, probably the final scene of um, episode... Um, episode 12. You gotta eat. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! We're gonna finish it. Okay, right, here we go. I'll take a bite together. All right. Well, if you don't remember the name by now, of course you gotta know. It's Superior Donuts. How funny is he? Seriously. Jermaine oh, Fowler, hey. you're great. Check him out. Monday nights, 9, 8 central. CBS. See it tonight. Cedric the Entertainer will be there. Jermaine, thank you so much. You're very welcome, man, homie. I appreciate that. Y'all be good, man. Thank you. Get a donut today. <laughs> mm -hmm.